Hello, my name's Paul. These are just some of the models that I've created on my three axis CNC machine. Now most of them were carved using the four sided carving method, uh, including the globe of the world. All that is except the four in the front here, which I carved on a homemade rotary axis. Now, I only have a three axis machine with a three axis controller so I wanted to add a rotary table to my machine. So let's go and have a look and see how I did this. So this is my Genmitsu Prover XL4030 and the setup I have on the, uh, on the bed is I had a spare stepper motor, a 4.2 amp NEMA 23 motor, which I mounted on an angle bracket, used a, a 10 millimeter straight coupler onto a, a rather cheap three, three jaw chuck. Uh, and at the other end, again, just a cheap um, tail stock, which had a fixed chuck on it. So I needed to fit a, a little rotary bit in there to enable the uh, the timber to go round. This method of carving is referred to as indexing or index carving or even a fake fourth axis. First thing I do is I've set it so it's perfectly in line with the x-axis and exactly on the center line of the chuck and st tail stock. So make sure you do this before disconnecting the Y motors. So now it's time for me to recalibrate the rotary axis which is now connected to the Y axis um, and I use um, UGS post processor software um, which uses GRBL or gerbil 1.1 and I need to know how far or what happens when it rotates. Uh, normally when we're uh, recalibrating uh, the axis travel um, that would be the X Y and Z I want my machine to say travel 100 millimeters and that needs to be exactly 100 millimeters not 101 or 99 it needs to be exactly 100 but with a rotary axis it isn't measured in linear it's measured in degrees so that would be 360 degrees make up one circle. In a previous video uh, you'll see I've got a paper disc on the, the front of the chuck with uh, various diameters on and I assume that by finding the, the length of the circumference I could use the same uh, formula for finding out the, the travel. This worked okay but it meant that I had to change the durable settings for each particular diameter um, of, of wood that I was using. But I came across uh, a far better formula um, and I'll just show that to you now. Now in order to calibrate the rotary axis I need to change the dollar $101 figure in uh, UGS in gerbil which is the, the, y, the travel resolution. So instead of it being uh, in millimetres, it will be in degrees. And the information that I needed to know was uh, my microstep resolution and the, the gear ratio. And of course the degree step on the actual motor. In my case it's 8 microsteps resolution. I don't have a, a gear ratio, so it's 1. I multiplied uh, together and then divided by 1.8 degrees and that gives me a figure of 4.444 now that's the value I enter and change the the dollar 101 but ju just remember that if you're changing any of the gerbil settings um, to make sure you save a copy of the original so you can come back to your normal three axis carving now it's time to put a blank of wood into the the little mini rotary axis and I drill a hole and glue in a, a little piece of 10mm dowel 
Uh, this just means that um, the end of my wood is, is clear of the chuck. Um, ignore my little bit of tape with the mark on there. Uh, and if it's square, uh, I take the corners off roughly um, with my little saw and that sort of helps. Now we need to move on uh, and create an area tool path or rather we need to surface this wood now to make it round. So what I would do in this instance is find the, the highest point on the wood and that will be my, my Z height and then move the, the cutter way across to the left close to the chuck but be careful of the rotating um, teeth on, on the chuck. So now it's time to open Carve Go Maker. I've used Carve Go Maker for quite a while now and they've been extremely helpful and supportive. So let's open up a new model. In the dimensions box the length of my wood is uh, approximately 150 millimeters long but the height has now become 360 degrees because we set the rotation steps per degree this will now be 360 degrees regardless of the diameter of your wood and I set the origin point in the bottom left okay so this side of the the workpiece is facing towards the chuck and this side is facing towards the tail stock and my origin points can be anywhere around the circumference of the wood. So the first thing I need to do is to create a rectangle around a vector rectangle around my workpiece. So drag it out to the corners and it will snap and then say create. Close the tool settings and open up the tool paths. I now want to create an area clearance tool path, so I select that. And I want it to be with inside the selected vectors. So my start depth will be zero and I'm going to take off about one millimeter. So we put one in there and add my tool to the tool list. I'll use a, a little 1 8 end mill so I select that and now just check the other settings make sure I've got a safe Z height. The material thickness <coughs> at this point doesn't really matter so we'll call it 10 millimeters and the top offset is zero so we say OK and now we just tell it to calculate so that's our area clearance toolpath. So now we have our piece of wood perfectly round, it's time to see what we can carve. So once again I set up a, a work area which is 360 degrees by 150 millimetres. So let's open up Carvco's library and we'll just choose an animal and we'll grab this one and bring it across onto the, the work area. And now we need to rotate it so that it's facing in the right direction. So we'll go minus 90 degrees and say apply. And now we need to just stretch it out a little bit so as it fills part of our work area. And we'll move it close to the bottom. Now if we were to leave this exactly where it was, this represents one full circle, one rotation I beg your pardon, of our wood. So this would only carve around a quarter of our piece of wood. So what we need to do is to resize this so that it's going to go almost all the way around our, our timber. So what I should do is increase the height, 
which is this way now and we'll make that 100 and 125 say and we'll say apply and we need to give this relief some depth so we'll call it five millimeters and we'll say apply and again we just need to move this onto our work area so we'll have a look now we need to stretch this out now to go around our piece of wood so we grab the top one and we will stretch it out until it's almost all the way around our wood and we can move it up just a little bit just so you can see that the the top and the bottom this point on this leaf and this point on this leaf will be around the back of the wood so we now need to paste this down and now we can treat it exactly the same as we would if we were carving relief onto a flat piece of timber so we would select the the 3D tool paths we now need to create a vector around our, our model so we drag across the the rectangle tool create a rectangle around the whole of the work piece because that's where it's going to go so we bring that round and we'll tell it to create a vector so now we have a vector created around our whole relief but we only want to select inside the, the vectors choose our tools so my finishing tool of choice is a, a ball nose 7.75 and we'll say select I'll come back to that in a moment we need our roughing tool and we select this the roughing tool will be my end mill 1 8 again so we select that and we just check that our safe Z is not too high and not too low I like to set this pretty close so as it's so I'm going to set it at two millimeters and we define the material again we can just choose a, a figure our model is five millimeters thick so we'll choose ten so we choose that leave the bottom offset at five and we'll say calculate So there we are, Carveco is calculating the toolpaths. There we are, so that's done. Now as I say, I'm just going to go back to the, the tools for a moment and have a look at the step over now this step over of 0.125 is set for if I was carving on a flat piece of wood now we're carving at 30, 360 degrees this is three times the length of what my normal piece of wood would have been so I could increase this step over now by three times so 0.36 and you can also do the same with the the roughing tool but from the experiments I've carried out I don't really take this up too much so I'm going to take this up to sort of 1.75 we can leave the step downs exactly as they were and we'll just recalculate it again
Now this makes the carving process a little bit quicker. So there we are, we're almost there. So there we are. So we can close this machine relief and close the, the rectangle. Now let's have a look at the tool paths before we go to save it. So let's have a, a look at the simulation. So we will simulate the control bar and we'll have a look. So let's just spin this through a few times. We'll have a look now. This is using the the end mill for our roughing path. So we'll, we'll fast forward this a little bit. And that's our, our roughing tool path. So we we'll close this. Delete that one and open up the, the finish. Do the same process again. And we can see now we will just slow it down to real time. And we can see now that for every pass from left to right, and right to left, our machine is rotating in the steps around the circumference and this will now carve through the whole process and it will go around our piece of wood. So that's how I set up my, my reliefs onto my timber and of course you can choose other reliefs, STL files, uh, I've made a, a couple of STL files um, and also text, you can create text but just remember that it's 360 degrees around the workpiece. So that's how I set up my rotary axis and the scope for what you can achieve is only limited by your imagination. Thanks for watching. Bye.